deleting virus here and we are with Tedrick and we're here to do another Worm Wednesday update. Tedrick, why don't you inform us what has happened with Albion in the past week? Well, as you can see, we've got some of the front walls done here. We've had a little bit of a uh, of um, internal uh, a drama, for lack of a better word. If you try to hide from drama, it finds you out anyway. And we had some villagers um, leave on us under some difficult circumstances. And uh, what can you tell us a little bit more about these uh, difficult circumstances that uh, they have left under? All right. Well, we had two members come back from uh, KOS a couple weeks ago. A Kingdom of Soul, another uh, another kingdom on the Elevation server, and they came back for a couple weeks, and they were kind of acting funny, and they weren't on for long, they didn't talk much in TeamSpeak, so we kind of had an eye on them, but it came to a head about two days ago when they said they wanted to leave the village, which was fine, and they said they wanted to leave, and then for about 24 hours, they packed up everything that wasn't tied down, took a gnar, and fled. And uh, what happened after this? I heard there was quite a bit of fallout that spread into the global chat and stuff like that. Yeah, there was quite a bit of fallout. First of all, the, the NAR that they had wasn't theirs, so that there were people from the the, ele the elevation. There were people from MR Home that were trying to get it back, um, and then there was a lot of back and forth inside the global chat. And then it got as bad as when they got when we our forces finally recovered the NAR. Um, they, the two that took it just completely lost their minds in Global Chat. They started threatening DDoSs on our team speak, on individual players. It was a mess. And at some point, I take it there was GMs involved? Yeah, the GMs got involved and uh, they proceeded to stop threatening people. I don't know if any bans were issued. I didn't get the full word on that yet. Um, but the one player that was heading up the theft, um, Jackie Legs, proceeded to commit um, digital suicide, for lack of a better word, just kept respawning and kept getting killed in Glare Shore, just just saying and you know how much that they hated particular people in global chat and uh, bad mouth and GMs. All right, well we'll go ahead and uh, we'll leave off with uh, going over Cheyenne's uh, uh, candle wax in, and also if you want to see more about uh, what happened with the. Uh, NAR incident with Jackie Legs. I will have some video footage up a little bit later. I'll have a link in the description below. If anything, I'll probably have something embedded in the video itself. Deleting virus here, and I am with Cheyenne, and we're going to do a quick walkthrough again of the Candle Wax Inn. And if you've been watching the Worm Wednesdays, uh, you would probably notice that this is the same place from the first Worm Wednesday of week one when we did this. So, Cheyenne, why don't you tell us and tell show us what changes have happened with the candle wax in and i love how it's gone uh, pretty quick okay so the changes that have happened with the candle wax is um the first four has got um a lot more set up but the fourth floor didn't really change as much it's in the upper floors that um increased and i've set up a lot of uh new stuff i've worked on the the beds and thing. You have to give me a sec to, to climb up here. Mm -hmm. Uh, which floor? Okay, there you are. Okay, there you are. Oh, each of the rooms have beds, and if you want me to explain the way the the bed system works here. Sure, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would love to hear of how this is all working. <laughs> um, so basically, you'll pay for the bed and the tiles that you you live in. When these get furnished, they'll probably work something out where the more stuff you have in one room is the cost as well. But for now, it's just basically you pay for the actual real-time days that you want to have this bed for, and you pay for the, having the tile. But if you can't pay for having the bed and the tile, you only can have the tile, basically. That's what I'm putting it into. There's three types. This is the small. If you move into uh, this room, this is a medium, a three tile room, which increases in cost. And then let me find the four tile room, which is the most expensive. Each different type of tile room is different days, so if you want one day, you'll just buy the small room, and four day, uh, six days for the large room, and four days for the small room. So, so be able to show up and 
rent a room and sort of like hang out like if they need a retreat or a hunter shack kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I can let other people like use some stuff up, uh, um, like use actual items in the room. And if you see what's gone up here, is some people dropping uh, animal corpses and themselves up here. I'll get these removed. <laughs> yeah, it looks like someone's so, having some fun playing practical jokes. But, um, basically the only part of the Kino X that isn't finished is tearing down these th this wall, putting the floor up here, and making it so the roof doesn't indent like this, because it looks, uh, if you come from this direction, it doesn't look that well. It was moved over one more tile, it would look nice, but it's on an uh, odd tile, so... It needs to be bashed and rebuilt. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for your quick uh, walkthrough of the play. You're welcome. And, uh, hopefully, we'll have more building highlights going on through uh, the rest of uh, the worm construction. Mm -hmm. Construction. Yeah,